All right, everyone. Welcome to the Inspire Life podcast. We have a special podcast and video cast for you today. As all of you who tune in regularly know, Michael's generally the interviewer, and now he's going to be the interviewee. So I, I thought it would be fun to interview Michael, and he doesn't know any of the questions beforehand, so this is all raw, real, and organic. And, no uh, pesticides. Yes, no pesticides, all organic and natural. And for those of you who don't know me, I'm Dr. Mel. That's her. And this is Michael. I'm Michael. And welcome to our show. <laughs> That's a cooking um, show. That's a different if show. You, if you haven't already, make sure you comment, like, and subscribe, and turn on the little bell on YouTube, because then you know when we come live and when we post and all the things. So, are you ready? I think so, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I got my coffee here, so... We're gonna I go. Really don't need much else. <laughs> we're gonna go into it right away. So, Michael, <clears throat> as someone who has studied different, you know, some different spiritualities, and someone who has also went through confirmation, religious stuff growing up, uh, how right now, being a 28-year-old male, <laughs> do you connect to source, to God, to the universe? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Not all the questions are like this. Holy. Yeah, um, honestly, for me, I, I get it through being outside, being in nature. Um, that's where I feel the most connected to source, as you'd say. Um, I frequently read passages. There's a book called Autobiography of a Yogi, which is about kind of the life and story of uh, a gentleman named Paramahansa Yogananda, who was a yogi, was part of a uh, Swami order, and was, I guess, fully enlightened in 1950. He moved to uh, California, so... Um, I get, he ties a lot of kind of Hinduism to the Bible and talks about how there's a lot of similarities. So uh, that's, I guess, what I read. But no, for me, it's being out in nature, for sure. Being in trees, hiking. Um, being in trees. That's just where I, <laughs> yeah, that's where I feel the most connected to planet Earth and that which creates. So, wow, that was a heckin' question to start. Heckin' question. Well, and I think it's a testament, you know, we, we always grew up playing outside and we yeah. would, you know, some of this, some of you know our story of when our parents got divorced, but our mom one time drove across the United States to Colorado by herself with us in the back seat of the blue minivan. And throughout that, I remember just being in nature a lot and it is a, a place to connect to source. I know yeah. me too. I know too. I've never read the book. Michael keeps telling me to read the book. I will eventually. I know I will, and I see how much it's impacted you. So yeah. I know that he's an incredible author, and I know one of, another book that I have from him, I believe, is The Yoga of Jesus. Is that one of the smaller ones? Yes. Yeah, he has, like a, I think, 10 of those kind of smaller ones. There's yeah. one, How to Talk with God, Living Fearlessly, um, one on The Law of Success. Have, yep, yeah. I have that one. That's a good one, too. Uh, it just honestly, yeah, reading, reading his work, and, and especially Autobiography of a Yogi, like fundamentally changed the way that I – live my life and kind of view, you know, everyday things and our interactions, not only with planet Earth, but with other beings and everything. So yeah, great book. I highly rec I've, rec I've recommended it to probably, I don't know, I've given it to so many people. I've probably purchased that book 30 times off of Amazon. Because we do have it in the office. If we have a couple that. copies yeah. in here. I also keep a couple hidden in random places. Cool. What is your, next question, what is your favorite food? If you had it, not a meal, but like one food or one peanut butter, uh, no question. Honestly, <laughs> I mean, I would say almond butter, but almond butter is like triple the price of peanut butter. True. So when it comes to, I mean, I look at food as energy, right? So and I I consume a lot of energy because I spend a lot of energy each day. And peanut butter is when it comes to a macronutrient profile, when it comes to the taste, when it comes to how versatile it is. When it comes to just everything about it, fucking love peanut butter. So give Michael some peanut butter for his uh, birthday. Yes. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> and if I'm gonna, I mean, I like to make, I like to make a lot of my cooking is inspired. I would say kind of with more Asian influence. I use a lot of ginger, a lot of garlic, and I love making a nice like stir fry with a nice peanut sauce. That's one of my favorites, yeah. and it's really really hearty too, and a, a good kind of a thick meal. Makes sense why you gave me cashew butter. You gave me cashew butter for Christmas this year, and you gave me cashew butter for my birthday. Yeah, so I think it's that's like a year of eighteen dollars a jar. So it's, it's not <laughs> it's something you're gonna kit. go out and buy. By I'm not gonna go to the grocery store and be like, I'm gonna buy cashew butter for myself. It's more of a, a specialty a thing. So yeah, I like nuts. Um, like 
honestly, yeah, peanut butter and fruit. I eat a ton of fruit. I love bananas, bananas with peanut butter. So pretty simple, no. pretty simple. Third question. If you could travel anywhere in the universe, doesn't have to be confined to planet Earth, oh, where would you go? Oh, I've always said the moon because that was just, you know, it's, it's just there. It'd be fun to see. Um, I'm going to start with the planet, though. I would love to visit Germany. Um, more so for the fact that, you know, we're very German blood. Our, both of our grandparents are from German. Uh, they immigrated here in, in 19... Well, our grandpa immigrated here in 1956, and then uh, Hilda came over in 1960. So I would just love to go see Germany and essentially where our people are from. Um, that would that would be that. And then, yeah, I think the moon would be cool. I've always wanted to go to the moon. I mean, ever since I was a little kid, I've been enamored with space and with the solar system. Like, when kids were drawing pictures of animals and stuff in first and second grade, I would routinely, consistently draw the solar system. So. Yeah. I'm very, very much drawn to Earth. I think it'd be cool if you could figure out a way not to melt to visit Venus because I think Venus and Earth, there's a lot of similarities between the two planets when it comes to size. And I mean, back when I was in elementary school, I, I had this little hypothesis in my brain that Venus used to be like Earth and Mars will be the next kind of Earth-type planet with life. But who knows? <laughs> you get a picture into Michael's mind, how he thinks. Yeah. Uh, this one's a little bit... Uh, not as light, maybe going a little bit more deep, but what's the biggest obstacle you've overcome, would you say, in your life? I think deeper than the first question you asked. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, a lot of people who know me know my story, and growing up was tough with parents getting divorced and going through all the eating stuff, eating disorders and all of that. Um, what would you say the toughest What's obstacle the I've overcome? biggest obstacle you've overcome? I think it's actually just been my mindset. Um, mm. If you know me, you know I go internal with pretty much everything when it comes to how people are reacting to what I do, how I'm reacting to what other people are doing when it comes to everything. You know, What we do internally and what we focus on internally is what transpires in front of us. So for me, it's been mindset. and. Coming from a place of growing up, not being good enough, being lost, not really knowing who my true self was, and, and going through a discovery process, and continuing to understand that my mindset is powerful. Like we were talking yesterday just about how, you know, I have a long to-do list, and over the weekend I got probably like three quarters of it done. And I just made one one switch which instead of focusing on, oh, I didn't get all of this done, I said, but look at what I did get done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that, I guess, is an obstacle that I'm continuing to overcome is understanding the power of the mindset and how to frame things in a way that's not gonna help have me feel defeated, but it's gonna ha help me feel like, you know what, I am on the right track, I am doing things well, and I can keep going, so. Yeah, and I feel you know, what you're saying, too, is if you can overcome that inner work, the inner obstacles, mm -hmm. your perception of external obstacles changes radically. Yeah. And I think a lot of people, a lot of our listeners and viewers would probably agree that the mindset, when they've overcome it, perhaps listening to our podcast, is huge. Yeah. And I've seen you overcome that as well. Yeah, and I think another one, going back to like my story of health, too, uh, is fast food addiction. Because, yeah. I mean... I've mentioned it a couple times, but my that addiction was bad. Yeah, that was really took a toll on me, and it got to that. You know, they say if you're gonna make changes, there's different ways to do it. But I got to that epiphany point where I was like, I cannot do this anymore. And, um, what was that? So that was one of my questions. What was that rock bottom moment? Like, in brief, what what was happening, and what was the shift? What was the epiphany of like, holy smokes? I need to make a change. Maybe you've shared it already in the podcast or in our classes, mm -hmm. but what was that? Yeah, it was, uh, I can't remember the exact day, but it was May uh, 2012, so eight years ago. I think it was like May 16th, maybe 17th. Um, Anniversary. It was Tuesday. But uh, I remember I, I was coming off of crutches. It was the second time I had had this kind of pretty severe knee surgery, a bone graft transplant in my femur. Uh, and I, I went and stepped on the scale at the follow-up appointment at the doctor's office, and I was 375 pounds. And I knew at that point, I was like, 
and I, I, that's the title of the episode, number uh, episode nine of the podcast. I didn't make a change or I'm going to die. Mm-hmm. And it's that was the moment where I said, okay, I need to start making changes. And that was a day when I, I literally told myself, I'm like, I can't eat fast food anymore. I know that this is contributing to what's going on with my there now with my health. So, I mean, I've had fast food since then, but it's, it's been, it's changed. Like, um, that was the moment. That was for sure the moment. Um, and, you know, going from that, I started kind of a food movement and then started seeing the chiropractor, which helped a lot. But yeah, stepping on that scale in the doctor's office, I will never forget seeing 375 on the scale and just knowing that's not healthy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, taking a, already taking a high dose of a blood pressure medication and my blood pressure is still like 145 over 90. Like things started to click. Mm-hmm. It's like this is all connected, right? This medication isn't going to save me. I need to, I need to fucking change my life, or, <laughs> or I'm screwed. So. Yeah, and it's not just you know what you're saying too. It's not just the number, but also like what is your internal internal experience of the number? What is your internal experience, like we said, mindset around what it is you're doing? Because some people could look at a number, and this isn't to you know go into shaming around like weight numbers because we're all about positive body image and it's more than just a number but at the same time sometimes when you hit rock bottom you need that number to catalyze you oh yeah yeah if i you know i knew the way i felt and stuff but that wasn't enough to actually to physically be at the doctor's office right and to see that number everything clicked because i went straight from there and doing my blood pressure and it was just like okay we need to change now (laughs) so If you had a day that's totally free and there's nothing on your schedule, what would you fill your day with? Ah, very, I like this question. Like nothing on your Google calendar. Okay. (laughs) What would you fill it with? Um, Assuming that I got to bed at a decent time the night before. (laughs) uh, And assuming that my alarm clock aid comes and wakes me up at 6 (laughs) a.m. Um, I would probably wake up and I would read. I have gotten in the habit of reading in the morning, which I love. I was actually late to our podcast meeting because I was reading this morning. Uh, and then I would have a tea time. I would go play golf. Uh, can I can I play with climates here? Because I would love to like play 18 you holes. Create your own reality. Like I would tee off at like 7.30. I'd be done with that by 10.30. Uh, I would make lunch. I would make a peanut butter omelet. If you've never had a peanut butter omelet, <laughs> Please try it. It's very good. Delicious with a side of uh, spinach and garlic. I just I love spinach and garlic sauteed together with some salt. Very simple, very delicious Yum. though. Um, the amount of garlic I eat is insane. Um, and then I would go and I would probably skate for about an hour and a half. Uh, hopefully I'd have other people to skate and pass the puck with. But I like for me moving is I love moving. I just I. I I'm always active. Like Jess makes the comment, my girlfriend, like I'm, I'm always on my feet just doing something. So I probably go skate for a bit. Uh, I come home and maybe have another little meal or something. And I'd go for a, like a nice, probably 20 mile bike ride. Um, and then, mm-hmm. yeah. Like a triathlon. Yeah, seriously. That's my Golf ideal day though. And, and ride my bike. bike. <laughs> yeah. That's, I mean, the only thing that I could think would maybe be climbing a mountain in there, but I can only, I only have one day. Um, and then for dinner, I would have probably some walleye that I caught myself with some wild rice and asparagus. That's kind of one of my mm. favorite go-to meals. Uh, and then I'd have ice cream, sea salt caramel ice cream for dessert. Yes, from Talenti. Yeah, yeah, Talenti is a good brand. I like Quick Trip brand because it's cheaper. <laughs> but I mean, that's because I'm a Quick Trip evangelist. So it's interesting to see, you know, as your sister, I know what you stand for in your company and your how you coach your clients, which is a lot revolved around mindset, meals, and movement. Yeah. And how you can fill your whole day with that. Yeah, so, honestly, like I said, being outside. Yeah, and and if I could have it perfect, I would play golf outside, and then like I'd be able to, I don't know, it would suddenly drop fifty degrees, and I'd be able to skate and play hockey outside. Cause I like that. I just love being outside. We should have done this interview outside. Right. And we'll probably have to do a part two because I know we're going to wrap up on time. Otherwise, this podcast will be like an hour long. But I know you asked this to your people that you interview. If you could leave the listeners and the viewers with one thing, mm. what would you nice. leave them with? I saw this question coming because <laughs> I've listened to the podcast before. Yeah. I would go back to that mindset and know that 
if there is something that you really believe in, if there's something that you have the will to do and you are willing to put in the effort, uh, nothing can stop you, honestly. There will be people who don't vibe with your ideas or don't really understand why you might be doing what you're doing, like whether it's starting a podcast or a YouTube channel or if you want to, I don't know, get good at the game of golf or if you want to start becoming a triathlete or something. And if anyone gives you flack or sends you negativity, just understand that that's them. That's their projection because some part of whatever they're doing doesn't... What, what you're doing, maybe they're jealous, maybe they feel shame around it or something. And I, I want to get away from that completely. Just focus on what you're doing. And um, there's, uh, there's a quote. Uh, oh man, what's his name? I can't remember his name. I don't think it's Carl Young. No, it's not Carl Young, but it's, uh, it's a lecture. Alan Watts. Mm-hmm. Alan Watts gives a lecture where he talks about uh, fulfilling, doing things in your life that make you happy and fulfill what you're doing. And, and he says, if there is something that you enjoy in life, there is at minimum one other person who also enjoys doing that. And if you just start doing that and focusing on that, you'll find each other. And then you can create a community around it. No matter how weird it may be, like, hey, I am at, I want to just start the peanut butter cooking community and all we do, we make meals and everything has peanut butter in it. I guarantee I could create a community around it. And that's what it really comes down to. Enjoy what you're doing, find the people who like that same thing and just have fun. Um, that's what I leave people with. Know that whatever it is your ideas are or whatever it is that you want to do, if you have the belief and the will to do so, you can make it happen and you'll find people along the way who want to join you. Like attracts like. Preach. Dig it. So to wrap this up, Michael, I know that you are currently in the process of seeing clients in your business. So how can people find you and reach out to you and potentially start that conversation if they've heard something that resonates with them and they're looking to make changes in their life like you have? Yeah. Oh, this is fun. I like I like being on this side of the interview, actually. <laughs> Uh, first and foremost, I would say if you want to just get to know me, if you want to see what both my Dr. Mel and I are all about, uh, go on Facebook, join the Inspired Living community. Uh, we're put all sorts of stuff out there because, I mean, we're just, we're giving away free content. We are, all the strategies and stuff that we use to live our... We'll give it away freely. To live a healthy life. Like, we're just putting it all in that group. So definitely join that. Uh, you can find me online. I have a website. It's coachkrug.com. It's very, you know, coach and then my last name, dot com. Uh, and then you can follow me on Instagram too. Michael underscore Krug is my Instagram handle. K-R-U-G. Um, yeah. And it's pretty simple. Those are the three places where I am present online. Uh, and then you can always come hang out with me, have a cup of coffee here at the Spray Life Chiropractic Center. Just like this. Yeah. Yeah. Free coffee. What more could you need? Cheers. Thanks, Cheers. Michael. Yeah. And thank you interview. all. Yes. Thank you all for listening. Thank you all for watching. As always, if you really found value in this episode, make sure you like, comment, subscribe so you can stay in touch with future episodes. And as always, keep inspiring. Thank you. Hey there, did you find value in today's episode? We sure hope so. And make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Also, hop on over to Facebook and join the Inspired Living community. There, Dr. Mel and I share health and wellness tips to help you live your most inspired and thriving life. And as always, keep keep inspiring. inspiring.